Hello class, this is the lecture for 3-7 from the Forrester textbook. I have a couple of videos that I want you to check out. The first is by this math teacher, I think he's in Hawaii, where he uh, uses this visual tracking software that keeps uh, a bunch of little coordinates for where things go around and he's got this cute little train set that he records the X and Y values. So go check that out. All right, so thanks for watching that. Second, I have a video of a uh, man throwing a champagne bottle, and this guy would have benefited enormously if he had known about sinusoidal regression, about figuring out where a sine wave fits with a particular given data. And as you can see, here he's winding up for the pitch, the uh, ability to know about rotation and sine and cosine uh, actually turns out to be very uh, useful data. Oh, I, you could not have planned that. Oh, <laughs> like how, oh, that just, that's so unlucky. So uh, watch that video, make a reaction video. It's just, you, you, you need to know sine for real life. So that one's just funny. Um, Today, we are going to be talking about word problems, about when you've got a particular given set of information and you're trying to work out when uh, or what equation will best fit the data, and so when some future thing is going to happen based off of some circular or periodic function. So the concept of a water wheel is something you may or may not be familiar with. In the olden days, this sort of sparked uh, the uh, high medieval period that the, the power that you could get from putting a wheel in a river that would then turn the wheel and then use that to grind flour and uh, make all kinds of uh, bellows for a furnace or anything like that, that getting this, harnessing the power of flowing water was something that uh, was very important and spurred a lot of mathematics and is still a good intro for us finding sine or cosine functions that match the data. So here you can see, this is the problem from the textbook uh, using figure 3-7b. There's a picture of the water wheel, and you can see it dips into the water a little bit. So the distance, just looking at the picture, from the center to the water is a distance of six feet, which is good to know because the actual water wheel itself is seven feet in radius. So the water's uh, a foot, we're a foot into the water. Suppose that the water wheel in figure 37b rotates at six revolutions per minute. Six rev per minute. Let me write that down. Uh, two seconds after you start the stopwatch, point P on the rim of the wheel is at its greatest height. So where's the point of the greatest height? It's at the top. So it's at, two sec at plus two seconds, we are at the top. Need to know that. Uh, which is at a height of 13 feet above the surface of the water. The center of the water wheel is six feet above the surface. So you can see then that if the center is six feet above the surface and the top, the radius, is seven uh, feet away from there, then at the height of the water wheel, you're at 13 uh, feet up. So let's try to, try to keep this information then and let's, let's be thinking already about how to make a, a trig equation that will match this data. So I've got the facts again here, but now remember the way problem solving works in math, word problems, the real life actual doing anything with this is where you say, what do I know? What do I need to know? Can I get from the start to the finish and then presentation? Can we take this information and answer their question or maybe recognize that it was a bad question? Stuff like that. So we've got a sort of accumulation of facts. Let's, let's start talking now about what we, we might want to know. What is the maximum height of this wave? Well, that was part of my explanation is to say that if you've got six feet above the water, 
plus seven foot radius, then you're up there at 13 feet. So as we start to try to sketch a graph, we can see that 13 feet up is gonna be the highest that it ever gets. Where it's the lowest it ever gets. Well, the wheel dips, if we're like riding the wheel, then we might dip into the water. And if you remember from the previous picture, we might dip as far as one feet below the surface, which we would typically call negative one feet, make the surface zero. Frequency is what they gave us, that it rotates six revolutions per minute, but then what is the period? What is the, the length of time that uh, this is going on? Six revolutions uh, per minute. Six revolutions per minute. Well, there are uh, 60 seconds in one minute. One minute is the same as 60 seconds. So that means that uh, if we divide, not the zero, if we divide the six, that means that we're doing one revolution every 10 seconds. So that's a useful way now for us to be able to find that we want the period to be 10 seconds. We want the period to be 10 seconds. So see how you kind of have to go one little step there to translate frequency into period. Um, when did it get to that high point? Like we would, we would have expected, because we like cosine. Cosine is start at the top and fall. Sine is start at the middle and rise. We're sort of expecting, you know, pretty soon after we started, we've got a, uh, we were up there at the top. So how, how far away from the beginning was that? How much was the offset? The, uh, we, were, we were off uh, by two seconds so that the, the, the starting time was not exactly right at the peak, it was, it was off by two. So that's, that's important for us to know what's going on at time zero. So now we can start to sketch a graph. We can say two seconds after we started, we were at the max, and then we came back around, and we need that this distance from same spot to same spot to be 10 seconds. Okay, so you build the picture up to be able to make an equation. So we, 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 we've got the graph. Now we need to think about where we want it to be. Okay, so what's the midline here? Where's the, the regular axis that we need? Well, if we know that the radius is 7, I mean, this total distance here, this total height is, is 14. So halfway in the middle of that is seven from the top or seven up from the bottom. So we need to have uh, an equation that goes y equals a cos b x plus c plus d. We could think about the equation that way. The d here, the shift up, is going to be at six. So we're starting to piece this together. We can say that that was at six. The period, all right, so this is that crazy thing about the period. The period is equal to two pi divided by b. So if we know that we want the period to be 10, then we need to divide by some b that will get us that. Well, if I multiply both sides by b and divide both sides by 10, that means b equals two pi over 10 which is the same as pi over five. So we've got to get a pi over five there. Uh, the amplitude, what was the amplitude here? If this midline is at six, then we're going seven up and seven down from there. We said that already when we were figuring that out. So that's got to be a seven. And then we said that we had a left shift of two. So that's all together. And I should probably be like Forrester and put the six at the front and do 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 do. Okay, so here it is graphed out for you and you can see two seconds after we start, we make it to the top. We'd have anywhere you wanna pick on the graph to go from one spot to the next time that that spot happens, it's 10 seconds. We dip a foot down into the water. We have a maximum height of 13. 
this equation, which you can graph in your calculator, represents a useful representation of the graph. This is a, a helpful way to break it down. So now, here, all that to finally answer the two questions. How high above or below the water level will point, B, point P be at time equals 17 seconds? So our two questions, part A is uh, what is our Y at 17.5 seconds? And will it be going up or down? Will it be going up or down? And then at what positive time T was point P first emerging from the water? Okay, so that's part B, first emerging. All right, so these are going to be some tricky questions that you might be able to answer by hand, but probably not. This is, again, why in the real world you're going to use a calculator, you're going to use a computer. Let's, let's go to the calculator and make sure that we can uh, look at the graph, understand it, set up a good window, and use the calculator as a tool to predict future information, solve problems like this. Okay, so we need to put the equation in, and we need to say 6 plus 7 cos parentheses pi over 5 parentheses x minus 2 close parentheses close parentheses. I doubt very much. Let's, let's see if zoom trig is any good. It probably isn't. Zoom trig is... No, yeah, that's not going to be any good. We think back to our graph where we knew that the height, the highest that it ever gets is uh, 13, and the lowest it ever gets is negative 1. And we usually don't care about times before the start of our experiment, so let's start at 0 and go to 10. Let's see if that uh, does us any good. And we'll make a tick mark every one, and a tick mark every one. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so there's a much more helpful uh, window for us. Let's think back to our questions. Uh, we need to say, what is the y value at time equals 17? Oh, I should have gone to 20 then for the time. And let's make a mark every two. So we obviously didn't think about that. We need to go to time 17. So let's test that out. Let's, we could walk along the graph, but the problem is that this is not very precise. We need to be able to plug in exactly 17.5. So let's say uh, that we've got a particular value we want to know. We want to know what happens when time is 17.5. And there it will tell us that we are over six-tenths of a foot underwater. So the y value is negative 0.6, let's just round to 0.66 feet, uh, meaning that we're two-thirds of a foot underwater. And where was that? I got lost there. That was... Okay, so we were at that point coming up out of the water, coming up uh, out of the water. So that's this looks like that. So we've, we've ridden it up and we've gone down, we've gotten wet and we came out, we went up, we went down and gotten wet. So that's on the second time. The other question that they wanted us to answer is uh, when is uh, the first time that it's emerging? So you look on the graph right about there. So we're looking to find a zero of this uh, that we want to know exactly where that is. So we need to Scroll our left bound, and I bet you can't see very well. Let me, let me make my window a little bit um, clearer for you. Let's go down to negative 3 and up to 17. And this time we can just stick to 10. So this is helpful to say you do sometimes need to fiddle with your window. There's nothing that's just absolutely perfect every time. You want to be able to see. That text across the bottom was kind of ruining my ability to see. So we need to find a zero, and we want it to have a left. We don't want, to, we don't want the going into the water. We want the first time coming out of the water. So we want to start about there and, not, and find it before there, and my guess is that it's right about there. So it'll tell us exactly 
at 7.8 seconds after the beginning, that's when we first started coming out of the water. So I hope this has been a sort of helpful tutorial for you. There's, there's quite a lot that can go into even just one trig word problem. Again, drawing the picture, being able to take the facts that they give you and build up a full uh, understanding of what's going on, to translate that into a graph, and then to translate the graph into an equation, which can then allow you to solve all the problems about what's going on. This is a, a big, complicated process, so please bring your notes to show that you were taking notes on this problem, demonstrating how it could be done. Let's have some questions. We need to make sure that we can review this and understand it before the test, but the the big process here is what you need to, uh, to bring and show me your notes in class that you've been working on trig word problems. So I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in class.